we have got an amazing guest for you guys. Uh, this is a man right here that I have been following for the past year. You know, when I started my platform about two years ago, I was really looking to connect with other dads in this space. And I think who we have on right now is just going to be an amazing person just to talk to about healthy relationships with family, healthy relationships with your kids. And so, Sean, I just wanted to, to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and for those that are listening right now, you obviously got a little bit of the intro, but Sean, something that we really love to do uh, when someone jumps on is to introduce yourself, tell a little bit of your story, what really uh, makes you purposeful about the things that you do, and then we just have an open conversation from there, man. Okay. Hey, Desi, how's it going? Hey, thanks for having good, me. Good, good. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, a little, little bit about my story. I'm 41. Uh, I love football. I love barbecuing. I love being outside, uh, backpacking, fishing. Yeah. Went, went, uh, did a little crabbing on the coast of California. I live in Northern California. Uh, just last weekend, my buddies and I, we came in with about 40 or 50 crabs. So that hey, was cool. Heck? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I barbecued carne asada tacos for the family last night. So we're getting to the important stuff first here, right? <laughs> there we yeah, go. Yeah. There I we got, go. I got three daughters, uh, all spread out in age 15, 10 and three. So I'm gonna be raising babies for a long time and, uh, yeah. for, uh, for work. So I've been working with families, children and, and teenagers for, let's see, 20 years. 20 years off uh, when I was in college, I thought I was going to be a stand-up comedian and I was doing comedy and it was just going fantastic. It was great. <laughs> and um, I started volunteering in like, um, you know, like an uh, after-school program and then a, uh, like a mentoring program for teenagers and it, like, it just rocked me. It was so fun. It just felt so purposeful and so alive. So I started immediately working with teenagers, kind of like, uh, you know, many of you have been to like either a sports camp or a sleepaway camp, you know, where you, uh, you go and there's like these great camp counselors there. Do you guys ever, you ever do that when you were a yeah. kid? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Football camps, <laughs> yeah. basketball camps. Yeah. There's probably yeah. like one camp. Maybe there was like these college age guys and like, Oh, it's the best, like that camp counselor. And like, I just, I thrived myself on being that guy. I just love being around the kids and working in different nonprofits. And then uh, about six years ago, I had this idea for this uh, unique type family coaching firm. Do you guys ever remember that TV show back in the day? It's actually still on. She, they're bringing it back called the Super Nanny. <laughs> Super Nanny? I, I, I don't know if I, have I haven't been able to watch much TV lately, man. <laughs> okay, so I'm 41. So how old are you, how old are you guys? I'm 34. Okay, so yeah, so okay, so about 15 years ago, this show was like really popular. And so here I am. We just had our first kid, and so like if you were having kids like around 15 years ago, 14, you know, you're you definitely knew about this show. It was like this <laughs> British lady who would go into people's homes, and the kids were like be all out of control and acting just really poorly. And the parents didn't know what to do. And so this British lady, Joe, she would come in and she would observe the kids in their homes and observe the parents. And it was kind of like funny because the first episode, just like the, the lady was rolling her eyes and be like, oh my gosh, like why are the parents letting the kids do this? This is horrible, all this <laughs> stuff, right? And then Joe would actually connect with the kids and connect with the parents and give the families tools, you know, for harmony, working together, parenting tools. And I said to myself, man, that is a great idea. Like for a, a, a business, that's a great idea. What great, what great way to help modern families. And so here I was 25 and I said to my wife, you know, one day I think I'm going to, I'm going to be like, a, do this. And uh, like how to go into families' homes, into the chaos, into the pain, everyday messiness, everyday life. And just really support modern parents and modern teens and modern kids with new tools and new ways of connecting and loving each other. Dude, that's that's so amazing. You know, yeah. now as now as you're talking about it, I have seen either reruns or things like that where the nanny does go in and just wrecks shop and just kind of observes, but then ends up connecting with the families. I know actually I know exactly what you're talking about now. Yeah, <laughs> I still don't. I got, <laughs> I got super, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, she was a legend. I mean, yeah, like uh, as someone who was, you know, 25, you get this first baby. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I was just a hot mess when I was 25. I mean, just got married and we got a kid. It's like all this pressure trying to make money. I had just gotten fired from a job and like, what is going on? Like, I used to spend my whole Sunday watching three football games, the early game, the middle game, the late game. Let's get some pizza. Let's throw the ball yeah. around my butt. You know, what a like, hangover. Oh, I, got a, <laughs> yeah. I got a baby here. I got a wife who's telling me I can't do this and I got to do this. I'm like, this? No one prepared me for this. Yeah. <laughs> that is so, oh man, I, that is so true because you I. Remember that now, it's bringing it back. I mean, I, how no, old are your I, babies, I, guys? Yeah, I'm PTSD oh. right now. Are you talking about this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, uh, so I have a, I have a four-year-old girl. Um, okay. And, yeah. and Matt, how old's King? Uh, Kingston is going to be two in August. So he's still yeah. young. I'm yeah. still fresh. Oh, I'm you're, still you're, fresh. You're I'm learning from both of you. Man. Not even two. Yeah. <laughs> Not even oh two yet. Oh my gosh. So you're doing diapers still and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm still that. doing oh. diapers. I just, just wiped the booty this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, gosh, as you're talking about that, Sean, I definitely, I mean, it's something that I'm still very much trying to figure out. You know, I, when my wife and I talk about this, we're, we think each other are just really crazy because we decided to, in, in the span of more or less, three three years we decided to buy a house decided to to change a lot of our our jobs start a business uh, we got married this past year in 2019 and so like i'm very much as you're talking about this i'm very much just like what the hell is going on yeah yeah so you're right uh, this is all so you're relating well i think this is why these men and women are listening to this podcast right now mm -hmm. right because yeah. it, it helps you to know you're not alone there's other men and women that are going through this. So it helps you know that there, are, there is a way out. There are tools. There is support. And, uh, and so that's why people are listening, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think exactly. uh, a big thing, Matt, that you and I have talked about a lot is that more people, more parents, more men of purpose need to connect with one another because I don't know about you guys, but when I first started this journey into parenthood, I felt very much alone. You know, I, I had three other brothers who I could connect with and one brother who maybe was a dad at the time, but I felt completely alone in this process. So Sean, kind of like what you're alluding to, I think the more that we connect with one another, uh, the more that we can normalize our experiences and not let it... Um, kill us <laughs> really i mean that's what mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about because it, it's it's a change <laughs> dude i felt i felt so alone so um we lived we moved into i was in my grad school program so we moved into on-campus housing and so we lived in mill valley golden gate bridge and we were surrounded by like all these amazing young couples that were our age or a little older and i looked left and i looked right and everything I saw was just health and maturity and love with these uh, young married couples. And I mm -hmm. looked at myself and I looked at my wife and I saw our mess and our arguing and her aggression, her yelling, her telling me I wasn't doing it right and, and me not being enough and me just like wanting to play John Madden football, which I was pretty <laughs> good at. <laughs> and, and just like, <laughs> oh, <sticks. boy. laughs> I told her, I told you, I told you, man, I play Madden. Like I've been playing this 93. I get every game. Anyway, it's back to, and just feeling <laughs> so alone and broken and embarrassed, ashamed. Like, you know, we're, we thought we were straight and we we're going to figure this out. And then like, you know, a week, a week into like a week past the honeymoon, we come back from Mexico and it, it's just like we did it real, you know, real life starts and we were just, uh, it was just hard. It was hard. Yeah. You know, Matt, I, I think, you know, he's talking about, uh, Sean was talking about grad school. And I think my first thought was, is your story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mine's is somewhat similar, but we didn't do the on campus housing. Um, but we moved clear across country too, uh, from Ohio all the way down to Mississippi, just started over, started fresh and everything. So we don't have any, I don't have any family in Mississippi. No um, I have a great, down. yeah, I have a great uncle Charlie that's there, but I don't know him from a can of paint all like that because yeah. <laughs> when I met him, I was, yeah. very, I was a baby. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah. you know when, when my parents. Well, his name is Great Uncle Charlie. So yeah, that's like they right. tell you something. Great Uncle Charlie. He's good for like you know coming over and eating hot dogs with him. You know he's got a great name. Gotta invite that man to Christmas. That's <laughs> right. Baby. I mean, right. <laughs> Great Uncle Charlie, right there. I tell you, you, like you said like I had an aunt, like Great Aunt, Great Aunt, you know Sandra. Like she lives nearby. We're like, oh, that sounds pretty solid. That sounds pretty yeah, solid. Great Charlie, Great yeah. Charlie, like so, me, so that's that's the picture right there. So yeah, so we all the way in Mississippi, a whole new different lifestyle and whole new different everything, just culture, everything down there. Um, and I was just starting fresh as far as like just on the even working as a job situation, a sports dietitian for Ole Miss too at that time. Okay, so everything yeah. was new. We were starting fresh. She was also starting a new career because they fortunately gave her. Um, an adjunct instructor position to teach. So it was just okay. us. Um, fortunately, my parents were able to come down for about like maybe like, I believe like five weeks to help out when the baby was first born. But after that, it was it was just us. No matter the schedule and working in athletics is already crazy, but adding a doctorate in there yeah. too, like it's, it's, it's insane, man. So, and I, and I not uh, what you call it. I talk about this all the time, just about how insane the schedule is, how my sleep schedule is, is horrible. I have to preach okay. sleep, but I can't get sleep oh. myself. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, that, the, like, and like Desi said, the PTSD, all that stuff came rushing back as soon as you said it. <laughs> we live, I mean, here we are in this at a time where like, this is the, it, we're talking about the, as we talk about the coronavirus, right? This is the day after uh, we hear that Disneyland is closed, a couple days after the NBA season was canceled, a day yep. after the March Madness was canceled. And we live in a time when all of us, we spend so much time inside, so much time on our screens, and so much time isolated. Furthermore, the way that we are raising our kids today is very different than how generations of millions and millions of generations of men and women have raised children before, where we are really geographically isolated from family members, where it's very typical to have this to be living here and have no family around us. So we're living in extremely isolated times and culture. And now you throw in this coronavirus and all these smart people are telling us to be safe and to be quarantined and therefore essentially be separated from each other even more mm -hmm. to have even less human interaction than ever. And so therefore we're gonna spend more time on our screens, more time being scared Scared and trying to figure out how to be a human being. Well, you know, this is such a crazy, interesting time we live in, isn't it? No, it, it, it absolutely is. You know, Sean, I, I really loved, I don't know if you posted it yesterday or the day before. You know, I really loved where it was like, it's time to disconnect with our screens and to go out and to be out in nature. And I really, I really love that. You know, I, I live right now in a place. I personally feel like I should be hiking more. I should be experiencing the outdoors more. And at the same time, especially during the spring and the summers when it's above 100, like if you don't get out there by 6 or 7 a.m., like you're, you're about to be toast, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, but I loved, I loved your post about disconnecting from screens and just connecting with others, especially with your, with your family. And so, Sean, I wanted to ask you, what are some of the things that you're discussing with your kids about this news? You know, what are some of the, the healthy communica Daddy, communicative tools that you were trying to navigate to, to help them understand, like, this is what's going on and this is how we navigate I'm that? Well, first of all, I don't have all the answers here. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I do not have all the answers. I mean, this is a new time for me. And for all of us, I did an Instagram post this morning and I shared about how the, the emotions that I'm experiencing and feeling here are similar to what I felt, you know, in the, in the week after the 9-11 uh, occurred. Now, if you recall what you felt during that time, there was just so much uncertainty. You know, I didn't know as a 20 year old man, if we were going to be bombed that day, or if I was, my buddies and I were going to be drafted into the you know, United States army and to be a part of world war three. Mm -hmm. And so as I think about our children, I, the first thing I think about is they're watching us and they're listening to us. And so yeah. we're modeling always to them. Watching. Yeah, absolutely. More is caught than taught with our kids. So they yes. are, 
watching us. And essentially, they don't have the maturity to articulate this. They are essentially saying, teach me how to respond in a scary time, dad. Help me to understand how to manage my emotions when the news is telling me scary things and my teachers are doing this and this is shutting down and this is getting canceled. Show me the way, dad. And so as a, as a man, I, I have a responsibility. Um, first, I'm trying to juggle my own emotions. I'm trying to figure out, do I even want to go to Costco right now? And I just came home from Trader Joe's and I'm like looking at my hands and I'm like, what is going on here? Like, yeah. how do I respond? So I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm the guy who just a few days ago was just saying, you know what, there's no way I'm going to let this get to me. Like, like our, you know, just watch the news. Like, so like, constantly, right? Like that's what a lot of grandparents are doing these days. They just turn on the news and it's just pure fear, anger, yeah. people yelling at each other. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm talking to my mom and saying, yeah, I'm just not going to choose to live in that type of fear. You know, mom, if you want to, that's your choice, but you know, we're going to keep living our lives. And then now, you know, Disneyland closes, March Madness, NBA. It's like, okay, this is we're getting told by the government. And so, yeah, so we are openly talking about this with all of our kids, but we're really kind of doing it together as a family. And so here we are. I, I don't have the answers because while we're filming this, it's a Friday morning. And this is the first weekend of like the intensity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so by the time they decide to watch this interview, in the future when you post it because in the next two weeks the world is going to change and yeah. something interesting is going to happen in the next 14 days and i don't know what it is yeah right isn't that nuts yeah. to say yeah. desi yeah, isn't yeah. that nuts it's it's it's, it's crazy it's just it's... nuts to think the world is going to change in the next 14 days because of their a it's going to get worse and like you know bad and scary things are going to happen or B, it's, it's not going to get worse. It's going to stay the same or it's going to get better. And we're going to take a big, deep breath and we're going to say, okay, you know, we got through SARS. We got through uh, this. We got through QK. We got through this. And this is another thing. And so the next thing that pops up, the next virus or the next big scare, we're going to be even better at getting through it. And so how do you handle this with uh, our kids? Well, I you know, that's just how I'm handling it. I'm just being honest and real with them. Yeah. And so I'm trying to manage it. And I think like I, like I was posting on Instagram this morning, I think I'm going to still, we're still going to do things together um, as a family this weekend. You know, we probably won't surround ourselves with uh, a large groups of people, but we'll probably spend some time inside and we'll probably spend some time outside. Yeah. Yeah. No, Sean, I, I love what you had said there because first of all, you know, for a lot of our listeners right now, I think it is heavily okay for you to say, you know what, I don't have the answers and I'm scared too. I think that's the big thing that I heard and just having open lines of communication with your family because, you know, I, this is kind of where I, where I take this, Sean, you know, I'm very vocal about uh, the importance of my wife in our relationship to parenting because she's extremely introverted. And I oftentimes joke that she is usually the mind and the thoughts behind the things that I say. And I'm just a talking head <laughs> because, <laughs> because so she, she's, a, she's a therapist. And so she's very oh, wow. much into, um, and I've been having her consume your content. She loves you, by the way. She says, what's oh, up? right on, please, man. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Uh, so we were, we were watching, I mean, this is kind of where I, where I take this. So this new movie Onward just came out about the importance of siblings and brotherhood and stuff like that. And it, it's oh, a that really cartoon? great Pixar. Really? Yeah, it's a really great okay. Pixar movie. That looks like um, really good. Like we need more, we need more movies for kids like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that movie yeah. looks really good. All right. It is. It is. You'll definitely cry. I cried. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so we're watching the movie and my daughter is four years old and there's a couple scenes in there where it's really loud and there's. Um, just some, some battling. I don't, I don't know if I would call it violence. It's just battling. Um, and my daughter was getting scared in the moment. And my first thought was like, oh my gosh, I need to protect her. Let me go grab her and remove her from the theater. And my wife just put her hand on my hand and was talking her through it saying, hey, are you scared? What does it feel like when you're scared? And so just asking her those really mindful questions. And I was so amazed. And I loved just watching my wife sort of just talk her through her emotions and I, and I took that experience. And now that this is happening, it's a really great reminder to have conversations with our family members, our friends, our community members, just yes. to say like, okay, well, what do you do when you're scared? Because I think what we are seeing in a lot of this hysteria is that people, when they're scared, they're extremely fearful. So they overreact 
to start to to being more of that scarcity mindset of like, let me go, yes. <laughs> let me go buy pallets and pallets of hand sanitizer. <laughs> although I will never use them. <laughs> That's a lot of hand sanitizer. Yeah. 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 And, and I think it kind of goes yeah. back to that where I think, uh, especially of our, our men of purpose and our like these dads of purpose of making sure that you are taking the time to say like, you know what, I don't have the answers, but let's also discuss this as a family. Man, let's talk about fight, flight, or freeze. So your yes. instinct as a loving dad was essentially to flight right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Many, many, many men, many dads before us have used those techniques in their 100%. parenting approaches. 100%. And I just want to give a prop to you and to every man listening to this, because I like to say that we are a new generation of men. We are a new generation of dads. We are very open-minded to all that the world has to offer. We want to understand our wives and our children and the, all the emotions that are driving us, all the desires that are underneath us. We listen to podcasts about how to be a better you know, spouse or co-parent. We uh, read books. We watch stuff on Instagram or Facebook. And we see that, you know, the whole world is there before us and we are coachable. Yeah. Right. And so I wasn't, I'm not trying to bash our fathers or our grandfathers. They did the best they could as they provided for us and they taught us. But, you know, that generation of men wasn't prone to go to a parenting seminar or listen to a podcast. No. Nope. They just kind of said, this is the way it is. It's my way or the highway. This is how I'm in a role. And now here we are. We, we are understanding that the, the, there's a kaleidoscope of emotions and knowledge out there. And we are open-minded to that. And we are trying to do the best we can. And that's kind of the type of person who's listening to this podcast right now, right? Yeah. 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 No, it, it, you know, Sean, it's funny because I was supposed to do a talk at South by Southwest. And it was really just, you know, how not to suck as a dad. That was the title of my I talk. I love that right? title. I have a, bro, I have a title like that too. I, I do you? Know, suck as a parent. I like yeah, that title. Yeah, but yeah. You, didn't, you were supposed to do it, but you didn't do it. What a but I title. didn't do it because of, of, of the coronavirus. So they shut oh. down the whole, um, the whole event because of it. Oh, but dang, I, that man. was literally part of the first part of my talk where it's like, hey, um, our generation right now is, was ill-equipped to be parents. Not to say that um, you guys are bad parents, but we learn from parents who also, and dads who also had limitations. Yes. And I was going to go through the different phases in our generations of saying, these were great fathers, but these, this is what they were working with. They were yeah. not, they were not, <laughs> you know, anytime that I, I love my father so much, but anytime that we talk about self-development and feelings and stuff like that, it's such, it's, it's hard for him to navigate. He's open yes. to it. But it's yes. very hard for him to navigate. And it sounds like, Sean, a lot of what you do in your content and, and what you're, you're talking about with a lot of these families is, is just that, where it's trying to navigate feelings, uh, discussions. And so what are you seeing on your end, some of the big things from oh, dads, goodness. from goodness. parents where you're like, oh, my gosh, this is across the board. Oh, bro, dude. Oh, so no, about, about half of the teenagers and college kids and middle school kids and families we work with we would say they're just they're experiencing what would be called like typical, you know, adolescent issues, right? Arguing, divorce, low self-esteem, motivation, communication issues, a lot of, uh, you know, screen issues, you know, different levels of like manageable defiance. But no, Desi, about 50% of the families that we work with, either through FaceTime or Skype or in person in Northern California would be described as extremely you know, defiant issues. So we're talking about, we have a whole new generation of defiance when you're talking about screen addiction. Yeah. We're also talking about this type of anxiety issue that is, that is kind of new and people aren't really talking about it in the news. Most school teachers and principals know about it where someone who has so much anxiety, they refuse to go to school. It's called school refusal. And of course, now we have all these issues with vaping and vape addiction, kids getting addicted to nicotine. We've got pills, we've got Xanax, we've got Oxy, we've got Molly, we got all types of pills and powders. And of course now pot is easier to get than ever, especially in states like California where you just need a card or you can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Or you can walk up into a vape shop. 
And so like, you know, just, just like recently, you know, one of our clients, uh, 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 like listen to this story, this, this is like a day in the life of me. Like I can tell you story after stories like this. This is just yesterday. You know, one of our clients was, uh, he's a middle school boy and um, he was, uh, he, 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 uh, he had a dirty nicotine test because you can purchase nicotine tests off Amazon and his yeah. parents are drug testing him and giving him a nicotine test. So he got what we, you know, he had a dirty test. And so he had his predictable consequence, which was coming up, which we won't need to get into of how we help <laughs> kids and how we help parents with creative consequences sure. because grounding and taking your phone away is stupid. It doesn't really work. Super stupid. <laughs> and he just got so upset. He went to the bathroom and, you know, he took something sharp and he started cutting his arms and there was blood mm -hmm. all over his arms. So he took the blood in his hands and he covered his face in blood. And so that is a really scary, intense story. Yeah. And so most parents will never experience that type of thing. It's very rare. Um, but there actually are millions and millions of parents who are experiencing this level of intensity, you know, with their children, where it's just so intense and scary and so fearful. They, they don't know what to do. And they, it's so embarrassing too, that they don't, you know, they don't want to talk to their friends or family about it. And so when you have a friend who says, yeah, I'm really struggling with my teenager or things are really bad. You, most of the time, you guys, you actually don't know how bad they are. Because if they yeah. even are really, really bad, like the teenager's just cussing them out or just totally out of control, or there's, you know, sometimes I'll walk into a house and there's just holes in the wall from the teenager punching holes. Yeah. You know, there's just a lot of really hurting families out there. It's the moral of my story, man. There's yeah. a lot of pain out there. In modern dads, we're, it's, in modern parents, it's tough because, you know, we, we, every parent has an invisible toolbox, right? Yeah. So you can't see mine and I can't see yours. So we're doing the best with the tools we have, but with all these modern issues, uh, it's like, we, it's just so common for us. We don't know what to do. Like we're the first generation of parents to have to talk to our kids about vape or about coronavirus or about screen yeah. addiction or about, yeah. you know, how this new generation of game, like Fortnite, where you, you know, you can't pause the game, right? It's like, yeah. it's, what do we do with all this? Well, I just, I just made a nice chicken and broccoli dinner. And yeah. I need you to come. Well, I'm in the middle of a game, mom. Well, how far is the game? Well, I don't know, mom. It's like when I die. Okay, stop. Well, no, come to dinner. I'm going to turn it off right now. Don't, mom. Mom, come on. Mom, no, don't. I hate you. I hate you, mom. Ah. You're like, oh, you're what, what the heck just happened? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right? So this is like every day in the life behind the doors of an American home. Yeah. It's, you know, it's crazy because I, I talk about this a lot. You know, I, I stopped, we were talking about Madden before we, uh, we jumped on, right. Of just like playing football. Uh, so I stopped playing video games a while ago because to me, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm behind in my schoolwork. I should be doing better. And then that thing just kind of stuck with me. And it's funny now with, when you're talking about the screen addiction. So primarily everything that I do, Sean, is through social media. So my screen is, is a, a very um, active part of my life. Yeah. Yeah. And my, my wife and I were just talking the other day, uh, because we were, we were taking a drive somewhere. I forgot what we were doing. And my daughter had an etch sketch and she was like, you know, this old is my school, iPad. baby. Yeah. Old yes. school. Right. So she was like, this is my, <laughs> yeah. She's like, this is my <laughs> iPad. Right. Um, and my wife and I looked at each other, like, we don't have an iPad. Where is she getting an iPad from? But it's funny, the amount of what you see with, especially in toddlers, the amount of play that you see where they will implement screens. And it's a nice little gut check to me because it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I try to do my best to try to really cut off by like 5 p.m. And that's something that my wife and I are constantly having conversations about like, okay, when can you have the intention to, to sit your phone down um, and okay. just be present? And it's something yeah. that I'm constantly working at yes. and it's something that we have conversations about. But I do think to a large extent that even with these kids, and I don't know if this is something, Sean, that you talk with the parents about where it's like, um, we have to also be responsible for setting the intention. So I love yes. the fact that you, you do a great deal of outside time with your kids and your family because that in itself sh should be no screens, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we're, this is the first generation of ch children right, to grow up with screens everywhere they go. And, you know, every day, average teenager now in California is getting a cell phone in the sixth grade. 
And so, yeah, but we're the first generation of parents who have kids who either want these screens or have these screens. We're the first generation of parents to walk into a freaking Applebee's and there's 50 screens on the wall. And then what do they do? They bring another one to the table. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, I saw that the other day. I was like, why, why is this needed here? <laughs> right. And so, so what is so challenging about this is, okay, so let, me and you share a lot of values. This is a men of purpose podcast, and I'm speaking to two high level sports uh, dietitians and trainers, right? Yeah. yeah. And so you and I each have a value as we value a healthy diet and we have a healthy exercise and we each value managing our screen time, right? And so, yeah. but just because we have these values, Desi, doesn't mean we can just like transfer them to our kids because we want to. It yeah. doesn't mean they're little like computers. We can upload our values, our morals, our faith, our spirituality, our political beliefs, our, our issues with food or work out to them. And so as we talk about raising our kids and sharing our values and giving them something they highly need, which is wisdom, mm -hmm. it is complicated because right. you, know, you might be this type of parent who just really wants to uh, teach their kids good things and i hope you are mm -hmm. and yet you know every child is different every child is this beautiful piece of meat and you've got to kind of work with it you can't yeah. just like force it and cut it the way you want to cut it you've got yeah. to understand it and that whole expression like you're you're you know i raise my kids all the same way i mean that's got to go it's yeah. like no every child is different and uh and that's what makes parenting so challenging right like yeah. how do we you know, right when we get them figured out, like, well, I can't, I'm in a sweet spot. And then like, you you freaking grow. And now you're yeah. like in middle school or now you're in high school. What? You don't want to, I was just talking to my daughter recently. Cause we kind of always have had different things we do together. Right? From early age, we did this together. My 15 year old, we did this. And now I'm like, Hey Maddie, you want to go to Starbucks? And she's like, no, why do you keep asking me that? And I'm like, uh, why, because girl? you used to like that. <laughs> that's our, th that's what we, that's what we've been doing. We go to Starbucks together. And uh, we spend time together like that. No, dad. And I'm like, so yeah, so now we're finding new things we do together, right? And so it is such a journey. It's such a dance. Yeah. And this is, I think, what I think your listeners could really value from me being on your show, this guest talk. Because people that are men and women that are listening to this, they value the things you value, right? Healthy diet, healthy exercise, yeah. boundaries, teaching our kids values. But yeah, we can't just go about there like we're like a fire hydrant. Like, okay, now accept this, kids. Here we go. <laughs> Take all this wisdom and be just like me, mini me. Woo! I'm a great parent. My kids are amazing. That's because of me. What, what? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work that way. But yeah, it doesn't hey, work that well, way. Well, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because I think to a large extent what you are saying is that, uh, especially in parenthood, you know, kids are transitioning and you're given new curveballs each and every day. I mean, my, my daughter's only four and I can tell you that I, in most cases, cannot predict how she's going to react in certain situations because, you know, when I feel like I have it figured out, she stops sleeping. When I feel like I have it figured out, she gets into school and she's trying to develop different social situations. When I have it figured out, it's like, oh, I've been really parenting and doing all these things, but I've been doing less for myself. Like, son of a bitch. <laughs> for sure. Right. And then we forget to take care of ourselves because we're trying yeah. to make money and be, a, be this and take care of this kid and this and like, right. This is why I would say, you know, it would be cool if you have listeners who are in their twenties, listen to this. Yeah. Because they're like, they're early adopters to wanting to learn and grow mm -hmm. from older men yeah. and say, okay, I, I'm not there yet. Like I'm not in that thirties, forties dad rut that routine yet but i keep hearing from men that i'm going to get there yeah. and i need to be ready i want to have wisdom probably the most common listener i don't even know i'm just guessing that men that listen to this type of podcast would be you know men in the 30s or in the 40s or in their 50s that are in that grind yeah in that rut and just struggling how do i how do i do this how do yeah. i have time for myself and have fun and and feel alive. Do I need to go buy a fifty thousand dollar red convertible to, to get through a midlife <laughs> crisis, or can it be cheaper? You know, can yeah. I find ways of feeling masculine and like a man yet at the same time, you know, balancing my 
my diet, my exercise, taking care of my, my wife or my co-parent, my spouse, and loving my kids, making time for them, right? This is the mm-hmm. journey we're in. And we're kind of, yeah. you know, I just want you to know, if you're listening to this, you're, you're in it. So keep going. You're not alone. And, and keep uh, knowing like you're, there's other men out there. Let's encourage each other to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it is perception too, as well. Your perception and the situation you're in. Uh, Cause I know if we go into the perception of, I, I can't take it the day I'm done with the day. I just can't do this anymore. Then sure. that's just going to draw you to just crashing completely. Um, yeah. and, it, and that's one thing that I've been working on myself. Just, just looking and perceiving just how blessed and how lucky I am to even have what I have right now. And also the wife that I have, the son that I have, and everybody just being healthy, just the minute things, just the small things, the smiles that I get, um, the laughters that occur, the just the, the food that I'm consuming, the, just the little small things that he develop every single time that I get around him. Um, just those small steps or just even learning how to walk, just those small things. I just try to just look at that and just perceive that as just how being lucky I am in that situation. And just no matter how, how bad the day gets, no matter how bad the day gets, I talk to Desi about this all the time, no matter how bad the day gets, just looking at it and looking at them and just taking a step back and breathing real quick and then just realizing, okay, you got to still grind it out at the end of the day. You're going to grind it out about the same time. Yeah. Just look at how lucky you are to, to be in the situation you're in. Yeah. Because it, it could be so much worse. Like, I actually, like, my body just, like, kind of, like, I felt this <laughs> calmness go through my body. I really feel it right now. Because you, you focused my mind on gratitude. You reminded me about the power of my mind and my mindset. And every man and woman can choose to be a victim or be a victor. Every yes. man has yes. things we can complain about and whine about. Every that has got hardships. But we all have things to be thankful for and to set our minds on and say thank you. you know, thank you, family. Thank you, God. Thank you for all these things I have. And and I know I need to set my mind on that. And it's such a reminder, too, as we talk about going to our first weekend of the coronavirus, you know, pandemic, set our minds on what we're thankful for and on hope and on, you know, on our families and how we are going to get through this. Yeah, it, it's, it's a really hard thing. You know, we uh, talking a great deal. You know, this conversation it has gone in a bunch of beautiful directions. And as we talk about, like, what is currently happening I'm with you guys. I think the big thing that I continually think about where it's like, I have faith in humanity. I have faith in these conversations right here. And for that reason in itself, I think that we are heavily responsible for making sure that our tribe, our tribe in our homes, in our communities, in our lives, that, that we are, are spreading that love and gratitude and, and light because it's needed. I mean, you see it all the time. I think the, the greatest thing to happen to social media was that unfollow button. Like this isn't a message that I'm, that I'm, uh, that I'm okay with. And if you're in a in-person social situation, I would respectfully say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to walk away. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. That's talk about, that's something that, you know, we, we, we talk about, we want to teach our kids our values and really what you're talking about there. When you're talking about an unfollow button, you're talking about boundaries. Mm -hmm. You're talking about how that's actually not a class they'll ever take in school but the importance of setting an emotional boundary between you and someone in person, between you and a, a news channel, between you and an unhealthy person, between you and, you know, all the things we can set boundaries for, because they won't learn this from school. It's, our, it's kind of something we're already teaching them or not teaching them, you know, how to set emotional boundaries in our lives with people and with unhealthy things, right? And to prioritize the things that are worthy of our time and of our mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest it's, things you learn is, is outside of the classroom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's what I feel like. It, it, and that's not a knock to education. Education is key. Education is why we are all here where we are today. But everything that you learn is literally is going to be outside the classroom and applying what you learn, even in the classroom on the outside situation, you know, in a real world experience. Those are where those real learning experiences come from. Yeah. So you, I, you I, just speak and just drop knowledge there, man. I hope that's not the case in five to 20 years. I, I've been, I'd like to say this, <laughs> right. that, yeah. you know, the, like the worksheets that I do with my clients, the process, the activities, the things I teach to middle schoolers, to high schoolers, to college kids, I, I say to them, you know, this type of things you are learning right here, it's going to be in every school one day, but it probably will take about 20 years. 
and they're going to take out some really stupid subjects that we don't even need anymore. They won't even use. And they're going to put important things in there, right? Yeah. Like the things we we're talking about on this podcast, how to uh, manage a healthy diet. Where does overeating really stem from? What is going on inside of you when you feel the urge to just self-medicate with food? Why do you need to find ways to take care of your body, take care of your mind? How to set an emotional boundary, how to have conflict, how to stand up to your parents in a respectful way, how to stand up to a bully, how to manage anxiety. The list goes on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And that's my hope too. I mean, you know, my mom is, is an educator. So we oftentimes talk about that when mindfulness and intention will start to be part of the curriculum because right now it's just like, like you had said, Sean, it's, it's things that I'm just like, are we, do we really need this? <laughs> like, right. Right. right so. One of the, uh, so I'm actually in my garage right now. I'm filming in my garage. I have a four bedroom home, but I have three daughters and they each have their own room. And so mm-hmm. I am in a little corner of my garage and this is like my, my background. Cause my wife has, Oh, uh, she's really into interior design and I'm actually sitting on my workout mat. And so this is a, uh, Talk about, we've run a diet and exercise. Can I tell you how I work out about three to four days a week? Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. (laughs) Imagine here I am in this corner and I can't turn the camera as a podcast. And on my left, I have a yoga ball and I have those Bowflex um, adjustable uh, barbells where one barbell could be up to 52.5 pounds all the way down to five pounds. And there's two Uh of them. I have two of those. And so uh, right after this podcast, I'm going to uh, go and maybe grab a cup of water or get a cup of coffee, get a tea, so much, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to work out for about you know, 20 to 30 minutes on my mat using my yoga ball and do just like a bunch of like random exercise, what I feel like in the day. And my three-year-old daughter who you actually might've heard come into the freaking garage and talk to me during this podcast because I thought I had privacy, but of course she came in and <laughs> you might've heard her and you might've heard my wife earlier being like, Kenzie, come on. And I'm thinking to myself, as I'm talking to Desi, like, keep my cool. Like, don't say anything. This is a podcast. And I'm like, come on now. Can I get, can I get one hour of privacy? In my garage. Right? I'm going to lock in the garage next time. And my dream is going to come out here and I'm going to turn on Spotify premium, y'all. And she's going to, we're going to put on Disney hits. On okay. Oh, all right. On my phone. And I'm go. going to be working out. I'm going to be grinding, bro. Not to Notorious B.I.G. Not to 90s hip hop. Not Mine. to Luke Bryan, <laughs> like I would prefer, but I want to be grinding, man, to Elsa and Anna and, uh, and a whole bunch of Disney Moana hits, bro. That's how I grind. Yep. That's how I work out. And, yeah. it's, and she's going to be wearing a little nightgown with maybe a little, uh, you know, frozen nightgown on it. And she's got little blonde hair, you know, down to the shoulders. And she's going to say, can I look at pictures, daddy? And I say, yeah, look at pictures, but no apps. No phone. Can I trust you? This is how, this is like the routine. Yeah. And that's how I mm-hmm. work out and, and talk about a joy. Talk about a, talk about a season of life. I'm just soaking it up. Yeah. I'm going to look back on these days and be like, back in the 2020, I was talking to my kids about the coronavirus <laughs> and I was doing podcasts <laughs> off my garage and I was working out not to, not to Biggie Smalls, but to Elsa song Elsa. with a yeah. three-year-old daughter. What a thankful, special time in my life. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> Dude, I, it, it's so funny, Sean, that, you, that you're talking about that because our first podcast, uh, <laughs> Matt's son, Kingston, came on. And then, like, the way that I have my office set up, I, I finally got a lock on my door. But you will you can hear Rory in podcast just like, Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> I got a lock! I'm going to have to get just a like, lock. Give me some privacy! <laughs> there is no more privacy when you have kids. That ship is sailed, man. I, I'm learning that the hard way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Right. That absolutely <laughs> resonates with me, though, Sean, because, you know, when uh, every year Spotify will release your, your top – your top songs, right? They'll give <laughs> yes, you that playlist. Will. Or who's and on then, your list, man? Who do you get? Yeah, well, that's the thing. So when I, I so I was working with the Milwaukee Brewers this past December. Um, just cool. got done working with them for two seasons, and we were uh, the strength coaches and myself were going over 
like our list and they're like desi what the hell <laughs> why is beauty and the beast on here just let it be just let it be X I question i do like Belle. i think Belle's the best disney princess to me because she looks past the looks right she, yeah. uh, right uh, right uh, dude, that's a, uh, oh my gosh. Sean, we might have to have you on for an episode too where we're just talking disney princesses man and in, in, uh in spotify playlist for kids like, well, I yeah, I'm, I'm all about that life is a right good now. one i'm soaking it in i'm soaking <laughs> this up man three daughters let's just enjoy talk about as matt was saying having a mindset of gratitude i do catch myself saying oh my gosh i can't wait for this kid to grow up or <laughs> oh why is she acting this way mm -hmm. oh my gosh it's driving me nuts but then of course i I want to correct my mind because our, our thoughts create our reality and just say, mm -hmm. look, I, I exactly. have a 15 year old, I have a 10 year old and I have a three year old. This is such a special time in yeah. our lives, right? Yeah. It's so temporary. It's so yeah. temporary. We're going to wake up and we're going to have gray hair. I already have it. When I grow my beer, I used to have yep. a sweet Irish beard and now it's turning gray. <laughs> and, uh, I don't, and so, yes, we're going to, and we're going to be these older guys that are going to say, hey, like some, you know, stupid cliche, like, hey, like, uh, you know, you're going to blink. It's going to be over or something like that. We're going to be those men. So <laughs> let's not be those men. Let's be the men. And I'm going to be like, you know what? It didn't feel like that for me. For me, I just like I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. I tried to enjoy every minute. It didn't. It didn't go by too fast. It was. It went by the right amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Time. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we want to slow down, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever says that. It went through about the right amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, Sean, thank you so much, man, for, for taking time out of your Friday. I know we had to do this recording uh, in the morning because Matt was busy or something. <laughs> That's a man, his co -host. this <laughs> oh my goodness this this literally you guys talk about the coronavirus literally I had to have yeah, my headphones yeah. in this in the whole conversation. Yeah, what's and up? What's it, up? It, I got a, I got, my phone was blown up 12 times by, it was. The, by the athletic director. So I yeah. had to call in on oh, this meeting, yeah. man. Right, because so you guys have to make all these decisions. Protocols, decisions right now, what's transitioning from in classes to out of classes, if they don't have laptops, how are we gonna provide those things? Gosh. It's just, man, it's, it, right now it's insane, just even scheduling time, if, are they still gonna train? Are they still practicing? Yeah, yeah. The, the spring competition and winter competition, all that stuff is done, but are they still right. practicing? And just in case, so it's just like, what dynamic, what parameters we gotta take if we gotta still go in, Okay, yes. if things got to be clean and update it, the coronavirus still stays in your body possibly for 29 days without even showing symptoms. Wow. Yeah, so it, 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 I was like, man, oh my, what the hell was going on, man? <laughs> our, you know, celebrities are our thermometer of our society. And so, you know, Rudy Gobert from the Utah Jazz, yeah, from as Jazz. well as uh, the spider guy from the Utah Jazz. What's his name? He's really good. He's an all-star. Oh, Donovan, uh, Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then you've got you know, one of my favorite actors of all time, a man I grew up watching, Tom Hanks has it. Tom Hanks, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and his wife. And so, right, I told, I would tell my wife, like, I'm going to be cool and all. I'm going to handle this well. But, like, if, if Tom Hanks, something happened to Tom Hanks, or if Tom Hanks there passed go. away, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to be freaking balls out. I'm going to be <laughs> right. scared. If Tom <laughs> Hanks dies, I don't know what I'm going to do. You ask me, how are you going to handle this <laughs> to your kids, Desi? I don't know. Something happened to Tom Hanks. I, Everybody I panic. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be all put my hands up, <laughs> man. <laughs> so yes, and so all these athletes now, all this stuff is happening, and so yes, we don't. Right, this was just a, such an important time for us to be uh, mature men. Yeah, yeah. Dads, fathers during this yeah. sensitive time. Absolutely, lives. man. Yeah, and I and I and I think to a large extent for a lot of our listeners who are going to be listening to this, you know, probably a, a week or two later than when this is recorded. Um, making sure that even though you're going to be doing some social distancing and, and that's what, that's what they've kind of um, thrown down yeah. in order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In order for us to be safe. And we, we will all be doing our own version of that. And you're likely going to be consuming a, a bit more content because you have more time. Um, the, the, the people that are on this podcast right now are heavy examples of what it looks like to be imperfect, but very, very intentional. So, um, you know, Sean, with, with that being said, man, I, I just wanted to thank you so much for taking time out of your day 
to talk to us. Man, we, we went from Madden to coronavirus to, to, to kids and nicotine tests. Like it, it was just like a, a bunch of yeah. different beautiful areas, man. So uh, last couple of questions for you, and then you can go and, and enjoy your Friday. Um, where can people find you? Throw my you know, yeah, man. Throw my Elsa songs, bro. I'm going to get Jack. I'm going to get Elsa. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let it go, Sean. Let's go. <laughs> so, uh, so outside of, uh, you know, just killing it in the, in the gym, listening to Elsa, which I've done that before. So I, I get it. <laughs> um, where can people find you, Sean? So they can find me on Instagram as the family coach, the dot family dot coach, or, you know, I, I write a, uh, a weekly parenting article at, and you can subscribe to my newsletter at parenting modern teens.com. My material is usually kind of like my personality. It's a little bit edgy. It's definitely real and raw. And so now that I'm doing a lot of these uh, live, I call them live drives. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll drive my truck and I'll do Love these them. like turn on live. So I'm posting those so just trying to give parents tools and support in new creative, you know, creative ways of parenting and thinking about their kids. And so that is uh, my passion and my joy. And then um, those are the way people find me as well as where future clients, you know, who yeah. want my help or I have parenting videos that you can subscribe to for $19. I have these, I have developed this really powerful parenting assessment that people can buy for seven bucks. It's just really deep. It really helps you to know yourself, study yourself and see what type of parent um, you are and things you need to work on. So yeah, yeah that's how people find mm. me. Awesome. Awesome. We'll make sure we put that in, in the show notes so that it's, it's easily accessible. Um, and then last question for you, it's, you know, we like to have a little fun on here when we have guests. Uh, so Sean, if you were to start a food fight, which food are you throwing and why? Oh my gosh. You know, I don't know. The first thing that comes to mind for some weird reason is ice cream. I don't know. I like <laughs> okay. to like put my hand in ice cream and be like kind of mushy. And like, then you like see it melt on someone's face. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. The slow drip. The yeah. slow drip. <laughs> <laughs> it would, right? It would. I don't know why I thought of that. I just like, uh, you know, ice cream, rainbow sherbet, dude, even though. I'm all about that pralines and cream, even though now, like, I think I'm allergic to ice cream. How about getting old, dude? Isn't that sad? I got to get, like, non-dairy. Like, <laughs> Man. Not it happens. Sucks, dude. <laughs> Whatever. Oh ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I, I love it. It's that slow drip. <laughs> yeah, slow drip image. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well uh sean again man thank you so much for uh for coming on uh this is gonna be an amazing podcast so we're excited to to launch this and uh really to promote your message as well man because i think more people need to make sure that they're much more intentional about uh about how they live their lives so i appreciate the time man cool well thank Likewise, you so much man. yeah thank you so much for having me gentlemen it's been a joy and a, and good laughs together today so keep up the good work too encouraging men and teaching men about balance and healthy lifestyles. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So we'll uh, end the um, recording there. So we're going to do a little intro, Sean, for you afterwards. But, um, man, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> man, my apologies for stepping out like that. You too, should man. be, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm so sorry, brother. I'm so sorry. That, oh, my God, bro. I just saw your body language in the back, just hand on the window. And I was like, he's with his AD right now. I guarantee it. <laughs> yes, man. They literally had some, yeah. uh, the abrupt meeting for everybody on staff. So they were just going yeah. through all that stuff and scenarios and situations and just advising people just to be worried with it. So I don't know. They're, they're still trying to figure out yeah. how they're trying to handle it. I don't know. It's, it's, it's insane, man. I was oh, like, man. Can you guys stop talking to me though, please. I have nothing to say about this. <laughs> um, right. I have nothing to say. I, I, I don't have no expertise on this at all. Just guys, just okay, right, right. okay, okay. I'll call back in right, later. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, Let me take Sean. a screenshot of us real quick, okay? Yeah, Let me take a screenshot. All right. Yeah, Ready? Story. Everyone uh, put a smile on real quick if you could. Right, look in the camera. That was good. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. You guys are going to like that picture. Cool. All right, guys. All right, man. Oh, yeah, I should do this, too. Oh, yeah, hold on. Let me do a little story. This is good, too. All right. Yeah, yeah the story mode. Yeah. Oh. So
So how was the connection overall? Did it did it go in and out at all for you guys? It, it, it did a little bit, but man, I, I yeah. again, you know, we'll uh, we'll talk about that when we do the the uh, intro. N- no big deal, man. I, I think the uh, the the bandwidth was was pretty steady. There are some things here and there, but that was mostly at the beginning. And I think a lot of our uh, really great talk was towards the mid and end, which I didn't have a whole lot of skipping there. So all good. Yeah. Okay, let me see here. Ready? Here, hold on a second. I'll have you guys say hi to the camera. I'll do a little. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, I'm just finishing up a podcast, Meta Purpose Cop Podcast. Hey, what's up, yeah. Matt and uh, Desi? What's up, Matt? Yo, what up, guys? What's up? What's up, yo? <laughs> Family coach people. <laughs> yeah, it was great being on your show. And uh, yeah, look forward to this podcast coming up and like, Probably what a week or two, guys. You'll let yes, it go. Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. Likely, a, likely a week or two. We'll definitely hit you up. So we're gonna have to. We're gonna need a a nice family coach picture. So you're gonna have to send that over. Okay, we'll do. All right, all right. Good stuff. All right, gents. Good stuff. Yeah. Cool. Pleasure meeting right, you, man. We'll, we'll be in touch, phenomenal. man. Thanks for having me, gentlemen. All right, talk to you later. Hey, good luck. All right, all right Elsa. All right. Get my man hype. Thank you. <laughs> all right, see ya. Later. <clears throat> All right, so we'll just do a, a a quick intro. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, so our guest that we're going to be talking to right now, his name is Sean Donahue. He's the family coach on Instagram at the dot family dot coach. Uh, this man is has been a huge, and I don't even know if he knows this, but a huge mentor for me because not only is he doing a lot of family coaching, but he's also teaching men and these men of purpose how to interact not only with themselves but also with their families and how to do it in healthy ways. And so our conversation went from Madden to the uh, current state of what's going on with the coronavirus and how to handle it. Um, it, it evolved into different areas of just talking about how he was a comedian and so uh the man is is amazing we had a, a really great talk and so i'm excited for you guys to to chime in and, and listen and special shout out to odin rain our our sound guy with the granddad's basement podcast mm, uh my just guy. real quick yeah we just want to say thank you to that man right right there as well uh for those that that are not subscribing to that podcast you have to uh odin rain man thank you so much special shout out to you my friend Stop that recording.